Uh, my name is Deng Solomon, uh, your supervisor for today. Uh, as we go through this uh, orientation of today, uh, first of all, I would like to let you know where I am um, in Morocco. I hope you're getting me. Uh, am I clear? Yeah, you are. Okay. So I'm in Morocco. I'm a student doing economic, but is specializing in public policy. Uh, it is an honor to be here with you today uh, because this orientation is for a scholarship to study in Ghana. Uh, we call it uh, Ashesi University Scholarship. It is sponsored by uh, MasterCard. So as we go on, I would like to let you know about uh, the ground rule that we should all adapt with. Like we should let ourselves familiar with. Um, one of the ground rule, uh, first of all, this, this ground rule was brought to you by Anna. So, and today the theme is orientation, online orientation for Shoshi University scholarship application. Uh, unlocking your path to change with uh, Associate University Scholarship. We have your speaker, um, the key speakers. Uh, we have Deng Solomon, which is me, and we have uh, Ajer Margaret. We have Edward Malweth, the speaker, and Ajer uh, is uh, our moderator of today, and I'm the supervisor. Uh, as we go with the, this orientation, we have uh, to know what is meant for us. One, our orientation will provide insight and also our orientation will provide tips and also provide us a broad road to, to know the guideline. Uh, as I said before, I am in Morocco and uh, Margaret is in USA and uh, Edward is in uh, Ghana. Now the, the guideline, um, mute yourself and then it is your turn to talk. Be respectful, raise your hand or write down if you want to talk, if you have something to to say, you raise your hand or you write down what you want to, to say. And then listen and pay attention. The language we all gonna use is English. There's no other language that we're going to use except English. Um, what we should do, everyone should listen carefully to what our speakers will say of this moment. If your network is poor, they write down you, your question or anything to be clarified in chat section because we have this chat section. And then now uh, the moderator, the moderator will be uh, manage the time and the flow of the session and make the speakers the center of the attention and also will keep track of agenda and the clock and remind the speaker and the audience of the remaining time and allow the audience enough time to formulate question. And then we'll also intervene if the speaker goes off topic, interrupt each other or dominate the conversation. The moderator will provide a brief overview, introduction, each speaker and facilitate a general discussion by the audience and the speaker through Q&A section. Um, we also provide an overview and manage comments provided or the message participant sent during a stream live orientation. Review incoming question from audience and guides and decide to whether they should be discussed or answered before, during, 
or after speakers. Uh, another thing is we we'll also warn members and block them from interrupting the meeting or orientation. Ask the right question when uh, any member is not able to ask either because of network or other interference. So at this point, uh, ANAS is aimed at inspiring you to discover your educational destiny for a successful life. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can take over, Maggie. Okay. Good. Are you still sharing your screen? Yeah, then you then, can stop. You stop sharing. I think you just have to stop and okay. okay. Um thank you all for the sessions and thank you, Dang, for that brief um introduction to our program today. And yes, I will be your moderator and being a moderator, trust me with your work, I will do this. Okay, Um, I need to point out a few things we should know before going onward. As they said, um, I will manage time. We have 90 minutes to, to finish this section. And with that, I will give our speaker 25 minutes to go through his slides and what he has for us today. And your questions will come afterward. Your questions and then a remark from Anna Stabs. So I will start, um, keep track of what you want to ask and I will help you to keep track of the agenda. I'm not at any side, whether the speakers or yours, like I'll just make sure that um, I keep track of the agenda because it is what we're here for. And two, when you're asking your question, make it sharp, clear, and loud enough for us to know what you're asking. Be concise and then, yeah, with your time, make sure you don't go around the corners to arrive to like your question. And then another thing I want us to know is chat is always available for us if you didn't have like an opportunity to ask your question, ask it in the chat and make it lively. You know, it's always fun when people are having like small things going on in the chat. And then two, when you're asking questions that like, um small reaction sites you all have to know before where you can raise your hand to for us to know that you are there to ask a question. And then two, if you ask your question, please make sure you lower your hands so that we don't confuse you to, to new people who raise their hands to ask questions. Yeah, um, for now, allow me to welcome our speaker, Mr. Duart, you are welcome to the stage and walk us through what you have today for the Anna family. So the floor is yours. You have 25 minutes to present your ideas. Is that what are we together? You say only in the meeting or no? I thought Alice yeah. is here. Okay. No. No, Daniel Adorachi is different.
Okay, guys, we're sorry for whatever reason. Let's be patient. He might be on his way. I mute him. Oof. Let him raise his hand. I'm not seeing him. Oh, that word joke. He said it is that word joke. Oh, okay. Someone, you, you just raise your hand in the in the reaction now. Uh, that I see you. I don't see you in there. There are a lot of people. I don't see. Are you getting me now? Yes. Okay. I think uh, due to the technical challenges that Eduardo is experiencing, I suggest I can pick up and then it will probably continue with the questions because I believe, you know, most of the slides are readable and I also have a little clue about this application process. I might be wrong, but I think it would be good to... Uh, make our program effective and the session more interesting. So at least kindly help me with the slide and I'll just try to improvise anyway with the explanation. Is that okay, Maggie? Yeah, Ali will be presenting the slides and then you take up from there. So okay. I'm dedicated Can I to see? you to be doing that job. So Ali, if you don't mind, would you mind sharing the screens and then Solomon would go ahead explaining them. Okay. I okay. Solomon, that, that's are you be... seeing the screen? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all as well. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much, Ali. And to our audience, we do apologize for the inconvenience. We understand that, you know, internet technical challenges are not friendly, so it's not a do what's fault, but at times, of course, the internet does uh, its own dictation. I would love us to continue with uh, the beautiful slides that are prepared by Edward. If you look at the heading there, it's talking about unlocking the opportunities, uh, HSC University scholarship and the admission process. So the entire thing we're going to talk about the you know, the scholarship slots that are available there and how actually do we go about uh, the admission process because that is the most important part that we need to tackle. Uh, like Edward mentioned, you know, Asia University is situated in Ghana and it's one of the pretty new campuses. Um, it has a vibrant environment, you know, with more possibilities uh, to connect with the diaspora of international community and scholars. Uh, their main focus is generating leaders, you know, that would be able to explore the possibilities of being together, you know, and realize dreams. So that is the main core, the driving core toward the establishment of HSC University. And as you can see uh, depicted in the picture, it's a good university uh, with a vibrant community. Next, please. Uh, the presenter ideally want to, you know, give a little hint about HSA University. Currently, this university is hosting a good number of students that are studying currently uh, in Ghana, including Edward himself, who was supposed to be the presenter. And you can see our South Sudanese flag ranging there. Uh, HSA as an institution is unique in the sense that it provides holistic education that particularly prepare the students, not only to specialize. Uh, okay, that, that's a very good, that's a very good suggestion. Alit, if you don't mind, put it in a presentation mode, it will be more, more visible. Thank you, thank you so much. So this university, 
Wow, I think you are a slide ahead of me. Do you mind going back a little bit? Was that good? So the university is not only meant, you know, to nurture students in their various courses, but the, they they really wanted the institution, the students, to be ethical, you know, to have entrepreneurial skills and innovative leaders in Africa. So the entire goal is centered about entrepreneurship, innovation, and leadership in Africa, because we understand those are some of the major things that are affecting our continent. If you want to learn about the commitment, the community impact, and the excellence uh, that HSE offers, then you should be in the right slot attending this uh, orientation. Next, please. Now, we need to explore some of the scholarship opportunities that are within this institution. There are multitude, uh, you know, multiple scholarship slots that are available at Asheshi. There are others that are merit-based. There are those that are need-based. When we talk of merit-based, is when you have a certain excellence in certain staffs, they can also award you scholarship. This can be internal or external. They are also need-based. This goes, you know, to students that have a special needs, for example. They have issues paying their fees or they come from maybe a humble background. And there are also special initiative scholarships. And this is where, you know, we'll get more details from later on. So we need to learn now how these opportunities can make Asheshi education accessible to all deserving students. Because we come from different backgrounds as students and there are actually needs, there are special needs based on diverse background. For example, there are those who might fall under the category of merit-based, need-based, and also special in initiative scholarships. Next, please. Next, please, Alif. Brother Alif, I'm not seeing this. <laughs> the slides are not moving. Should I have the next slide, please? Oh, wow, that's so rapid. Okay, good. This has brought us to admission process. How then do you get admitted into a Sheshu University? So obviously, when we talk about university admission, there are special requirements. And it is upon meeting those requirements uh, that you can now commence your application process. And at the end of the day, you know, gonna for yourself a slot in the university. So how do this, the university actually recruit prospective international student? Because I understand most of us are not Ghanaian, so we should be international student in uh, Asheshi, especially for those who are aspiring uh, for the study slots at that university. Next, please. So how is the admission process done? Of course, you have the admission requirement, and I believe we'll get them in details in the next slides. Let me hope my voice is audible enough. Next slide, please. Oh, so <laughs> Moroccan network has also started. Hi. I think. <laughs> Today is just such a bad day. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Don't be surprised if all internets are shut out. It's a, it's a, it's okay. Let's trust the process. Uh, we have talked of the admission, the admission process, and the admission requirements. Now we should be looking at the student testimonials. It's a common phenomenon when you go to an institution that you have never been before. You often ask yourself, well, who are the alumni of this school? What do they say about this institution? Because it is from the past experience that you inform the new perspective. So there are various you know, student testimonials uh, that are coming out from Asheshi. And I happen to have a Ghanaian friend in the school where I study currently, who is also a graduate of Asheshi. So I think he often tell me how good Asheshi is. He just came to Asia in order to get new perspective. So there are inspiring stories, you know, from a Shishi student, those who have benefited from 
uh, the university scholarship program, those who have successfully navigated the admission process. And not only that, those who have actually transformed your own lives, those who have empowered themselves to make a difference in the society, make a difference in the inter entrepreneurial world, those who have made difference uh, properly uh, in, in, in the leadership scope within uh, the continent of Africa. And the pioneering aspect, like I told you before, of Acheshi was to make sure that a new paradigm can be can be forged, a new par paradigm where African graduates are entrepreneurs. They should not be job, just job seekers. African, you know, graduates uh, should be leaders who are actually, you know, inserting more effort to make sure that the crisis of leadership is solved in Africa, and the life of our people are transformed. So there are multiple testimonies that talks about how good Achechi is meeting the demand uh, of the students, both graduate and those who are actually aspiring to get admission in that university. Next, please. And of course, you can see those fine gentlemen. Now, when we look at uh, the opportunities that are available at Asheshi, this institution invites all African, you know, to enjoy the beauty of the education uh, in, in, that, in, that, in, that, in that city. So the next step that you should take is an approach towards transformative education and rewarding genuine personal and professional growth. Now, what is education all about? You know, it's basically three things. Transformation, what do you transform? Transformation all goes back to an impact that you will create in a society. Now, the other thing is, how does an education award you? You need a personal transformation. You need a professional growth. All these things are available at education. If you explore you know, opportunities within this institution, you will be equipped, fully equipped, to embark on transformative education and and also, you know, to enjoy that personal space where you can grow academically and professionally. Next, please. Now, here is the uh, the center of the, uh, the the center of the game. The admission process, like we said before, we talk about the admission requirement. So here is the checklist that one should uh, implore. I think it's not so feasible. Alith, if you don't mind, kindly zoom it. You can zoom it by increasing, you know, the visibility percentage. It, it should be at the down part. No, 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 please. Yeah, just just zoom it. I think maybe you use keep presentation mode, remove presentation mode, and then zoom it a little bit. Oh, sorry, the entire screen has disappeared. <laughs> Uh, let me hope it start the internet banking at us again. Okay, our doctor is back. Hey, let's go. We're winning this. Yeah. yeah. Good, good, good. Beautiful, beautiful. I think this should be enough. Oh, <laughs> we are back to square zero. You know. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, okay, push it the other end. Push it the other. Beautiful, beautiful. We can make it stop. Stop from there. This is enough, this is enough, Alid. This is enough. Now, here is the checklist. Of course, you know, a checklist is always a, a very important piece. When you are going to the market, you need to check out, what do I really need to buy today? Do I need some groceries or that? A joke. Now, what type of requirement do you need? You should bear in mind that with a cheshi, if you have an incomplete application, it will not be considered. So you really need to pay attention to details. You really need to pay attention to details. And by paying attention to detail, you should now take it as a duty to make sure that you examine all the required document critically, fill in all the necessary form, and then send them, okay? And number one here is completed and signed application form. I think we'll have a sample of the application form later on. So you should have this application form. Suppose you are not applying online, then you should download this application form. It's available on the website, download it. And after downloading it, 
you fill in all the necessary information, factual information, not just information, factual information, and then you have to sign it off for validation. After that, you should share your official result slips of the final examination you have completed. In this case, in this case, uh, there are the official result slip of the final examination you have completed. I really don't know, but in, in my opinion, I stand to be corrected. This should be your senior four certificate because if you have the certificate already with you, I, there is no need for you to uh, you know, submit uh, the, the results because you already have uh, the final e examination uh, 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 transcript. So I bet this is what they are trying to mean here. I stand to be corrected later on. Then there are the high school transcript, the report cards in other terms. Uh, okay, senior one, senior two, senior three. How many times have you covered from there? You need to produce your own report cards. I understand in the context of South Sudan, we really do not pay attention uh, to, this, to, to, to these things. But of course, it's all about negotiation. If you need something, you should also be prepared uh, to do some, I mean, some sort of compromise. So you can go to your institution, which is what most of the students are doing, the high school that you finish from, Talk with them. I need to apply for a scholarship. I have lost my transcript or report card, for example. Can you help me uh, to produce some? It's all about negotiation. Of course, I know it would be some kind of academic dishonesty, but that is okay. The end goal is securing the scholarship. So go to that high school, talk to any teacher available, make sure that they produce for you those uh, report cards in line with the time that you spend at that school. They should be stamped. And the grades should be, you know, a little bit cash attractive, of course, because this is a this is a competition, so you really need something to make sure that you stand uh, you stand out. Uh, in addition to that, <laughs> sure, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, th thank you, thank you, Edward. So official results only for those who have not gotten the original certificate. But if you have your original certificate with you, well and fine, you should be on the right track. You should get, uh, I mean, you should get submitted. So then you have 10 minutes. Okay, okay, okay. So I, I think I should <clears throat> wind up. Thank you for the reminder. Now, one type essay up to about 500 words, referent to page seven. And then one passport photograph taken within three months uh, with your name written behind it. This requirement, by the way, I see questions arising there that what a MasterCard scholarship. I think this is MasterCard because you will apply under MasterCard uh, due to your financial uh, constraint later on. So those are the requirements. They are reachable. Uh, they are readable. Next, please. I am left with 10 minutes, so I should utilize my, my time. I don't know how many slides are left. Uh -huh. Wow. I think with this slide too, we also need to... Can you zoom it a little? Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That should be enough. Try to push it to the center. That, that's good. That, that's good. Okay, perfect, perfect. Can I restand there? Now, attach a copy of birth certificate, the ECOWAS card, National Identification Card. Obviously, since we are not from West Africa, I doubt if there is any, you should just need to attach your birth certificate that is obtained from South Sudan. You also attach a, you know, a copy of the bio page of the passport, international applicant only. So if you are an international applicant, you should attach your passport. And what they mean by the bio page is the page that contains your details, your, you know, the details, your portal, date of birth, et cetera. You should submit that. Completed and signed a scholarship application form, if applicable. So the application form is needed. Now for those who are awaiting results, blah, blah, submit all other documents to initiate the process. Remember to submit your document for admission via email immediately upon release. You see. So this is a guideline for those who have their you know, results awaiting. But I bet most of us here have these you know, results available with them. I think the rest are readable and we'll share the entire slide later to the group. So for, for if you want to familiarize yourself with a certain aspect of the text, you can read more. 
Okay, now there is a special point here. Complete this, the scholarship application form only if you need what? Financial assistance. Financial assistance will be provided based on the availability of funds and on competitive basis. So for people in this forum, I suspect that they should fill out the scholarship application form because you need the financial assistance. So that your tuition fee and the rest of the staff are covered. Next, please. Uh huh. Now, here are the courses that are offered by Sheshi. There is engineering. I don't know whether they have incre increased the engineering programs. I used to see computer science. I used to see electrical and electronics. I don't know if there is any other, but there are a few engineering courses that are available. They also have computer science. There is business administration for those of arts. There's liberal arts. There is economics. Okay, next please. Okay, good. There are some essay questions here, and this is where you, uh, question one, how can Africa current leaders contribute to creating a thriving continent with equal opportunities for all in the next 50 years? As a prospective Asian student, what step can you take to actively contribute to such a future? This question is very reasonable. Uh, somebody asking of medicine, since it is not offered in the, in the brain show, suggests that they don't have medicine. Now, of course, this is a, a very good question. How can it, it all goes back to leadership. How do the current leaders contribute to achieving a thriving continent with equal opportunities? Now, what do you need to understand here? Three simple things. You know, try to imagine yourself. Let's talk about, I don't want to be political enough, but you can reflect on our situation in our country. Uh, are, we, are we being governed well? Are there, you know, leadership crises? Okay. And also try to imagine that at the global scale of the African continent, because, you know, our, our stories are almost similar. Then try to think, how do we create a thriving continent? A continent that would be, you know, that would be, weight in the same balance like Europe, like America, like Asia. How can that be achieved in your own word with equal opportunities where you don't have the higher class who control the elites, who control the states. And you know, they are the majority of us languishing down there. How does that come about? Now, as a prospective student, you know, imagine yourself being a student there. What a step can you take to contribute to such a future? So this is not a one day issue. How do you see yourself, you know, having a role to play in, in, in the wider context of changing the leadership architecture within Africa and, you know, creating a thriving continent where there are equal opportunities that exist for everyone. That question is mandatory. So try to draft an, an essay about that, 500 word maximum. You, you need some time to, you know, plan and, and execute it. This is really very fundamental. The other question is recall a time when you face a challenge with academic honesty, like cheating in exams. Share a situation where you had to choose between cheating and sticking to your values. Explain the decision you make, how you handle the circumstances, and the lesson you learn from the experience. This is pretty simple. You need to be creative to yourself. I know some of us might be, you know, academically honest, but you now need to reimagine the situation. Just be creative. Imagine yourself in the shoes of someone, you know, who shitted one day, for example. How did that impact you? Create a story around that. Be creative. Try to explore some word. Read your essay. Modify it. Perfect. <clears throat> next slide, Next slide, please. Of course, I'm seeing, yeah, beautiful, Maggie. Seeing Africa Agenda 2063. How do we arrive at that? What role do you see yourself playing in that, you know, uh, dream of realizing one continent, one Africa, where there would be free borders, free trade, etc. Oh, we have lose our slides once more. Oh. There was How many minutes? minutes? The game is really uh, minutes? three minutes and thirty seconds. I think slide eleven. So I think we are almost to the final thing. <laughs> Okay, so those are the essay options. 
there are three. I would not really. There are four in number. One is mandatory, and the rest are you know, uh, they can be selected. So How try to. How many should they write? Two. I think. Two. I think two. I stand to be corrected. I think two. Two S's. Two S's. Perfect. Two S's. So there is one mandatory one that talks about changing the leadership architecture in Africa and one that you can select based on your, your experience. So the rest are readable. In case of anything, we are available on the WhatsApp platform and you can also offer a question later on. Perfect. Next slide, please. We are time bound, so I really want to stick to time. Maggie might not forgive me, so. I really need to be you fast. still have two minutes. Don't worry. Perfect. Oh, so we are already at the conclusion. Thank you so much. This this work was beautifully prepared by our brother, Duarte Maloma Duarte. Thank you so much for the insightful slides. And uh, although the technical challenges did not favor us, hopefully we have hustled it our African way. If they are mistake, kindly forgive me. I just step in. Thank you for your audience and what is there and the rest of the team are there to answer your question. Thank you. Guys, let's, let's give our applause to, to Solomon. Uh, thank you so much for stepping up and to Alid also for playing that game with internet guy. Oh, digital world is not fun. It's not for the weak. I think Alid, you can now stop sharing the screen. Okay. And then thank you all the participants for being patient enough. Um, I really like love it. I love the quiet setting, the fun in the chat. It's just unimaginable. So right now um, it's question time. And Mr. Dwart, this is where I really want you to be present with us. We know internet might be sucking on your side, but inshallah, let's hope this goes well. And yeah, um, I will give 10 minutes because we're, we're late. I see someone is already saying he's going to feed his daughter. Guy, hey. So um, we're gonna give you 10 minutes to ask your questions. Could it be in the chat? Raise your hands and then we'll go slowly, slowly, and we'll step up from there, do it, okay? So right now, I have Dean John with his hands raised. Floor is yours, sir. Salam alaikum, ya Junabin. English, Abi. There's no problem. That was a greeting. I have to greet from my language. Level I just salam. like. <laughs> Let me try my little Arabic. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for this time. Uh, as Margaret has said, my name is Ding or Ding John. And uh, I will go straight to my questions. I will have three or four questions. I don't know whether I'm going to ask them. I hope you are getting me right. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's good. So I don't know whether I'm going to ask uh them as at one or I will be asking one question then answered. I don't know whether that will be okay, but to me, I would like to ask uh all of them then maybe to be answered. Now the first one is uh talking about the Ashesi scholarship. Uh, what are the qualification? Who? Uh, the second one is there an age limit as for the I see from the other scholarship they have to be age limit. Number three. Uh, when when is the application mostly? That is about the when when is the application open at uh, on which month or. At which basis? It's about the time of application. And lastly, you are talking. Uh, the application is based on merit and need. So I would. Uh, I did not under understand very well what you mean by merit and need. 
uh, I would want the speaker to expound on that, at least I know, because maybe the way I've taken it on my own perspective or perspective might be different. So I would need a clarification from that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dean, for that. Um, Adored will come to you. We have uh, Kuta Chiek in the line. Kuta, you're welcome. So I recognize everyone on, the, on this platform, and you, Ajer, and everybody who is participating. So I think almost what was needed uh, was has been asked by my my colleague or my brother. Um, you know, of course. I hope you are getting me. Yeah, we are. So, uh, especially the questions which was asked about uh, the 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 age limits, like old people like us, this Korean, how are they given opportunities? You know, in the SCA or whatever, or SA University, the, 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 the number one question is, is, is it possible for somebody to be given, if not possible, the full scholarship, then can be given 50% of the scholarship? That is my first question. And the, 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 the second question that has been asked, and I will not repeat myself again. Uh, so this is the only thing I, I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have Deng Joy. Would you mind lowering your hand? Good. Yeah. Thank you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Coco? We're here at e and Then? Yes. Okay. It's, it's your turn. Uh, but I don't know. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we could, but there is a noise at your background. Is there still noise now? Yep, there is a baby crying. I guess that's the baby saying you want to ask. It's it's a baby saying hi to e, to E and A. Oh, say hi to him or her. Actually, it's the one I was it's the one I was telling you guys I'm gonna feed. So she's right here with me. Anyways, okay. uh, I have one question, only one. <laughs> right? Yeah. I actually wanted to apply for um for the ICS University. But um, I've got a difficulty in obtaining the passport, right? So does it mean if I do have uh, the bar certificate, can I use it for the meantime? Valid. Yeah? Valid. Um, we're done. Thank you. Your question is written down. All right, Next, thank you. Um, Napoleon David. Napoleon? Okay, then a young call. Yes. Hello yeah. to everyone. Mm. So my question is, uh, I have seen a bank statement there as one of the requirement uh, being needed. So could you please uh, briefly tell us about uh, how uh, it could be done? That is my question. And another question is uh, about uh, um, yeah, passport. There are some passports which are still in a processing unit. So, could it be possible for us uh, for us to make it uh, to submit ID? In that case, when uh, the passport is still in uh, 
processing unit. Um, yeah. Uh, Napoleon David, I don't want to leave you with your question. However, if you're not responding, then we would move ahead and answer the few questions we have. Yes, Anna. Okay, okay. Good. Yeah? Okay, thank you for the chance. Uh, I greet you all. Um, my questions are... Uh, three. I will go directly. The first question I wish to ask is: uh, Do the university also offer post uh, like masters, post undergraduate? Do they also offer graduate up to postgraduate as well, or they only offer undergraduate only? That is the first question. Then the second one is uh, like: uh, If at all, what about if you are a refugee? You are in the camp. You only have a uh, uh, refugee ID, but yet you don't have other document like passport and so on. Uh, is there an opportunity you can be granted to such a group of people? Then that is the second question. The last one also is like, I assume like we are in Kenya, which criteria do they use? Because uh, which criteria will they accept you to join degree? I think I beg to stop from there. Thank you. Mm. Okay, please um, make sure you lower your hands after because I'm getting confused right now. Ding, John, um, would you mind lowering your hand? A young call, Ding, Joel. And then, hey, okay. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, let me see, we have, okay, I think we have come to the end of our question section, please. I I love you all to ask your questions, however time is against us. So go to chat and ask if you still have a few more questions. And after here, Mr. Duart, um, I will welcome you to try if your internet is now stable and elaborate on a few of the questions asked. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes, I do it. Wow. I think it's still has internet challenge. Okay. Um. Yeah. Mm, okay. For now, I think I will just walk through the questions because I see I do it answered some of them. Um. On chat. First uh, question was about like uh, the application deadline. I do not say the application deadline is, oh wow, 25th of this month. So the application deadline is 25th of March, 2024 for class of, class of 2028, right? And then the age limit for someone who asked for that, it's below 25 year old. That's the age limit. See your birth certificate. If you are above that, please, I beg. We're sorry. <laughs> we can't help. And then that was like um highly action. Oh, earlier, highly action actually. And then regular decisions is 22nd of August. First was 25th of March, which is like an action decision and uh, deadline. And then second deadline, which is regular deadline is August 25th. Put that on your what? On your calendar. Um, 
oh yeah, there is a little bit compromise. Hey, for those who are like at least 26 years, there is that little chance you can get in because they probably understand where Africans, I mean. And then for the issue of passport, um, I'm seeing right here, Adward said you need passport for traveling. To travel to Ghana, you must have your own passport. However, Adward, I will also ask back, um, is that only the with a scenario of traveling, or do you need passport when you're also applying to the university? Because then I saw before there was like birth certificate and blah, blah. So do you need your passport only for traveling or do you also need it when you're applying to the university? Clarify that in the chat and I will get back to, to those who ask that question. Mm. Oh, yeah, I think he did that. He said, um, if you have all the needed information requirements, then you can be admitted without a passport. But during the traveling time, it would be difficult to travel, which is perfect. So if you have right now all your documents you need for application, then you, you're, you're perfect to go. However, you need that passport to travel. Of course, you can't leave the country without your passport. And how can I get the admission process? Is it for university? Yeah, and what someone is also asking how he can get the application form. Is it through the university website or is there like a specific link you can, they can assess it with? Um, oh, same to someone who asked about Kenya secondary certificate. They said you can also be admitted if you have all other requirements, but you need your passport when you are traveling. And then about application fee, tell us about it, Adwan. Do they need application fee? And then someone, um, and to like someone ask about what are the qualifications of applying to a Cheshi? I think, guys, for the sake of time, we should just do that on our own, just have a research. And then the, the other question that Adore did not answer whether a Cheshi has a master's program. And then two, someone asked about the differences between need-based scholarship and merit. I, I think I will answer that. So for the need-based, it is awarded based on like um, your financial needs. That's why you need like a bank statement to see whether your farm is well off or not whether you have a lot of cows that you can sell out. Like guys, some of like these financial stuff are just way too stupid sometimes if you digest them. But I mean, who, who wants to give out their money without knowing the financial background of that person? And then for the merit based scholarship, you needed that. Um, it's based on like academic performances. So basically, if you obtain like straight A's and your application is perfect, then don't worry about it. You definitely gonna get like the merit-based scholarship. So two, the need-based is based on the financial need. And then the merit-based is based on academic performances. So you know better which one works for you. And then for the bank statement, uh, Ajak, um, I don't know, like for Ghana, but when I was applying, I also needed a bank statement account. I 
I I had of course one, but what can I say? I, I I'm literally like broke, right? So if you have like a bank account um that works, it's not hard to go to your bank and say, I need a bank account. Or if one of your parents has a bank account, because definitely you will have to indicate it when you're applying for the financial aid. So get that bank account, uh, the, get that bank statement from the bank and then like send it through. So I don't know whether it, it's like a mandatory one for the Ghana, but when I was applying, I needed it. Like mostly I needed it for my financial aids. Um, I don't also answer, you should answer about the refugees. Are they granted this opportunity as well? Can they apply on what basis? So yeah. And they have a forced graduate course, which is mechanical engineering. So for now, guys, a few questions. I think we went through all of them. I do what you need to answer about the refugee. But all in all, I, I really appreciate your patience. It's nearly... Mm. I, I I I'm shy to say the time. But yeah, thank you all for the patience. It's already like an hour and 25 minutes into this meeting with a lot of like technical issues and blah blah. But you all try to like stand up with us, make sure that this is going well and that shows patience. And of course, patience is like a key to everything. So for now, I will get back to the inner staffs and maybe Mr. Duart, I'm so sorry, like internet is disturbing, but at least if you could say a word in chat to, to everyone about the application process, and we definitely understand that internet did, did not allow you to like um, speak to your people, maybe sometime better. For now, um, I will ask my colleague Deng Solomon to say one or two. And please, guys, make sure mm, 10 minutes maybe we can utilize this, okay? And after all the Anna group, and then we'll conclude it, Jacob. So, Deng Solomon, you're welcome. Say a word and all other stuffs on the ground. And two, please, if you also among the participants, if you have a word to say, you're more than welcome. Your voice is most needed to us. So feel free. Oh, actually, I should start with you all. You have three minutes to say a word and I will go to the steps because I see the numbers reducing like seriously. Yeah, uh, hello, uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening once again. Uh, I really want to appreciate everyone for paying attention to this orientation. And uh, to Maggie, thank you for the wonderful job. And Solomon Jalang in Indonesia for taking over a lead. I appreciate your time. And Mr. Jacob, uh, it has really been a wonderful presentation despite the difficulties that we had. And our brother has really tried uh, his best. Edward has been replying to, to the question in the question session. So this is really a, a great uh, work done. Uh, as your supervisor, I've been monitoring and trying to, to talk, but uh, I've been put on unmute. So, but finally, uh, the host has decided to, to put me and muted. Uh, at this point, I want to say thank you. And I want to welcome uh, Mr. Jacob uh, to come and give a word of appreciation. And there's nothing I can say. Thank you for making it a wonderful presentation. Thank you. OK, well, thank you so much. Then, before you go, would you mind like closing it after? Okay. Um, yeah. Who who among the Anna? Okay. Uh, 
Ruben Garang and Alit and Solomon Jala, I see. So if one of you, or maybe you all, have like a few things to say, you're more than welcome. Oh, Alit is with people. So Ruben and Jala, step up. <laughs> I beg unmute Solomon's mouth. And then <laughs> you want me to say about the lobby? Maggie, you can continue. I think I spoke before while explaining the slide, so it would be a little bit repetitive trying to... Okay, then Ruben, Ruben you can go. Uh, allowed senior Ruben to proceed. Of course. Yes, finally. <laughs> I've been trying to unmute myself, but it was saying that they saying not allowing participants. They so that control was the whole system today, guys. Yo. Yeah, at, at least it's good for the background because when everyone was allowed to unmute or mute themselves at will, it used to make a lot of noise. So at least it's good that way. Yeah. Yep. I, I do not have anything much to say because a lot have been said and a lot have been asked and answered. So I really thank the guys for the patience because we know internet sometimes doesn't cooperate with us. And that's why when you are going for an online interview, they have to question you very well. Get a good internet because it's something like this. So next time when you are called for an interview, know that something like this may happen. So be well prepared and thank you. Okay. Um... Before then, um, if one of you participants have a word to say, we can rule you out of this. You are the boys and have given you a chance to say one or two. Okay, good. Go ahead. So thank you so much. I just found myself one of the seniors. I could not access the application or the, the scholarships, but uh, I would like to add for those who are going to win it, if God will, that you have to change the narrative of the entire South Sudan or Africa as whole. Well. So you have to bring something positive, not based on what you are studying, but on the experience you are going to get ahead there because I might not be getting or coming every day to meet you, but I just want to throw this word to everyone. So if you, if you win it, we have to change the narrative. Changing the narrative is writing your own story for the entire continent because Ghana is one of the West African countries that provide good education beside, uh, beside Nigeria and other West African countries. So uh, I would like everyone who is going to win it, you have to work hard and change the narrative of Africa, not only South Sudan, but you have to make it sound better. So thank you so much. If you understand it, you understand it. Thank you, Kud. Nice you. seeing you after a very long time. Yeah. A long time indeed. So <laughs> you, you are I American know. girl now. <laughs> no, I'm not. Eey, so I'm, I'm, I'm still a South I'm, I'm, ba I'm, I'm back I'm back to my I'm back to my to my military career. So I'm proceeding mm. with it. So this is why nice. I'm I, up and down. We'll we'll just cash up in the inbox and talk more about it. That is nicely. Mm -hmm. So we shall catch up. There. All, right, sure. all right, all right, bye. Mm. Who else? Um, uh, Martin, Daniel. Martin, I saw your hand raise. King Martin, Martin, okay. Martin, Daniel.
Okay, uh, I think Martin is also struggling. Now the South Sudan internet has started. It's concluding. Uh -huh. Thank you very much for giving me this full opportunity to express actually on this section. Uh, permit me at this moment to appreciate each and everyone and the programs you people have come up with. Uh, I appreciate each and every participant that has taken from his or her time to uh, shunta with us in this uh, section. Uh, I'm by name Martin Daniel, who is actually as uh, for the first time for me to attend these such functions. Uh, I'm the one who asked about the issue of medicines, and I found myself that things were not uh, well based on medicines, and it is not a problem, but I would like to have more clarification on that, if possible. Uh, this is just what I want. Uh, I'm actually requesting for medicine. I'm in Rwanda, actually, as well. Uh, attending biomedical, but I'm planning to have a general medical and surgery. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I think we'll clarify that in the group later, if you're in the group, uh, Edward will have a chance to tell us more about it. So right now, what I'm bad, then, it's it's your time to close the program and thank you all guys for attending it was such a wonderful section with a lot of difficulties and this has tested our problem solving skills you know well, well we're there we're there this internet has nothing to do on us so thank you all for the patience thank you all for attending thank you all for the lovely chat history and yeah see you all next time so then it's your time to close the program and yeah okay thank you so much uh Margaret. greetings everyone i don't know when on my side here is morning so let me say good morning good afternoon and good evening everyone so you like covering every uh all this so like i think that people now uh, maybe in the afternoon and other evening so thank you so much for the wonderful session. Yeah, it was colorful though. We had a lot of uh, in, uh, interruptions. So first of all, I would like to, to give uh, a special thank to Mr. Edward for his willingness to present though. Uh, we had some issues uh, with internet. So it's not the first time for us to encounter, in, encounter this. It has been happening in some in some occasion or some orientations. So we can say sorry for that, for those who, who have been actually struggling uh, to, to get the, uh, the, the, the presentation. Uh, and secondly, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Solomon for for volunteering to present. So thank you so much for that. That is the heart that we need. Say so that we always volunteer when things are not going right. So I uh, also would like to thank the organizers. Uh, let's start with uh, Mag uh, Margaret, the moderator, uh, the supervisor, Link Solomon, and Mr. Alice for his uh, for the wonderful job. So thank you, uh, all of you. Uh, the, the inner volunteers and, and all the members who, who, who were present in the meeting today. Actually, I, I I actually appreciate each one of you for all your participation because without you, this one uh, would have not been uh, would, have, would, have, would have not been successful as it is or as it has been. So uh, the next thing that I want to say, maybe for those who have been asking about the University of Rwanda, maybe the next session will be for uh, the University of Rwanda about uh, Kwamu Kuruma. So university, so we'll have we'll have it next because it's the deadline is a bit far, it's May, something like that. So we'll have it the next one. So for those who are preparing for, for the University of Rwanda, uh, uh, you, you need to you need to you need to wait and, and, and see. So the NI is also preparing for that and we'll have orientation soon. So about the about the, the general application. So one thing you need to you need to have is always is patient as we have encountered here. So you always need to have patience because whatever thing you, you wish sometimes will not actually happen like overnight so it just it take time so everything is like a, a, a life process so it's everything new time so when you're applying for a scholarship you need to have that level of patience because you will miss a lot you, you can even you can even end up like being rejected maybe for uh, actually 10 scholarships 
and you end up like maybe at the end of the day, maybe you can get 20, uh, the, the 20th one can be the one that accepts you. So what you need to do there is to be consistent. And along the way, you keep applying, you will see yourself improving yourself. If it is writing, you'll see yourself improving yourself in writing essay or even applying. So it will not be hard for you to, to, to apply now for the next uh, next scholarship. So keep keep always keep uh, trying and you always make decide. That thing can, can, can not only help you for one scholarship, but it can help you with uh, multiple scholarships. So if you are researching like you research at KC today, then it will be easy for you to research the University of Rwanda tomorrow. It will also be easy for you to research another scholarship uh, the next tomorrow. So always make research at your at your own level. So when you get the link, go through, make research, uh, watch some YouTube uh, videos and other things. If internet is hard, wake up at night. When, we, uh, when I was in South Sudan, I used to apply for a scholarship. I wake up at 12, watch some YouTube videos, uh, make some research until I sleep back maybe at four or, or at five. So you need to also you need to also dedicate your time because you you inform your subconscious mind because if you don't inform your subconscious mind, you will not get an opportunity. So always inform your subconscious mind such that your your whole body or your whole system will know that you are looking for something, and that thing will allow you to get that opportunity. Always be always be active or active in everything that you do, and you will surely get that opportunity. So finally. For those who are looking for other opportunities like medicine and all these things, my advice to you actually is quite complicated. It's quite hard to get uh, a scholarship for medicine. So if you are looking for a scholarship, know that you have only uh, one percent of uh, one percent chance of getting a scholarship for medicine. So and you also know, also need to know that like getting a scholarship for medicine, you need to have ninety and above. If you are if you are if you have uh, a South Sudan certificate, so you need to have ninety percent, ninety point and above. So below that, it's quite complicated. So I know like. The scholarship that actually get like some time that get medical courses like maybe e Egypt and Egypt scholarship maybe and Sophia and other scholarship but the rest of the scholarship like massacre is hard for massacre to pay for medicine because mis medicine are always costly and it's hard to pay like instead of paying 10, 10 students so like one person uh, one person for medicine can actually take the course of 10, 10 students for other courses so instead of paying one person they they they, uh, they prepare paying ten students to give other courses. So you can you can balance that you can see that. So sometimes sometimes you can you can you can see like how that how that is balanced. So thank you so much for paying attention and I would like to stop there and I would like to end the meeting. So if there's another burning issue, maybe you can raise your hand. If not, uh, then we can call it a day and and bye. Okay, and Jerome Singh, huh? Oh. Are we done, right? Yeah, we are done. Okay, bye everyone. Have a great evening. See you all soon. Bye-bye.